Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Defining Your Life podcast, where we focus on living in our purpose, practicing presence, and activating our power in each moment. I'm Marsha Rell, your resident pep talk provider, and I invite you to join me as we continue to learn, lift each other up, and strive to level up together. Because we are never finished defining our lives, and it takes a village, so let's build one. Stay tuned for the episode. Hey everyone, I hope that all is well and that your week has been wonderful so far. And if not, we are only midway through. So I encourage you to make a conscious decision to turn it around. Find one thing that you can do to gain control and make a change. We all know we can't always change our circumstances, but what we can do is change our reactions and the role that we play in shaping our days, our weeks, and our lives, right? So let's not waste any opportunity that we have to make things better. We don't want to get so far down the path of negativity that it becomes challenging to find our way back. You can feel all the feels and wallow if you must, but then we must get up and onward. Speaking of changing and shaping, after spending some time chatting with Deanna from Barren Fruit, both on the pod and on IG Live last week, um, sidebar, if you missed either of those, I encourage you to go catch the replay or take a listen. But I was reminded of just how important and powerful supporting others is, how our support helps shape and change their experiences and therefore their lives. Of course, we focus quite a bit on self-preservation because it is absolutely necessary. And even in the midst of standing in and up for others, we always need to be conscious of how we are faring at any given moment. Because if we are depleted, we can't help others. I talk a lot about being kind and showing up for other people because I know just how impactful it can be. And sometimes it feels like a thankless job or position that we hold, right? Well, it doesn't just feel like that. (laughs) But as a support person for others, it really can be a thankless and frankly taxing job. But here's your reminder. Don't do it for you or the accolades you might receive as a result. My rule is don't give away anything you are looking to get a return on. That's money, time, or even stuff you lend out. If you aren't able to part ways with whatever you have chosen to give without feeling burdened, then don't give it. And that really alleviates a lot of the ill feelings you may carry when you don't get the return on investment you anticipated, regardless of if it was a simple thank you or something deeper. It doesn't mean you shouldn't prey on it or think it through ahead of time or that it won't actually cost you or be a little uncomfortable. It just means you won't be holding on to any baggage because of what you've given, what you've done, or how you've shown up for someone else. Let's consider that sometimes folks don't have the capacity to express gratitude at a given time, or maybe they aren't at the same place as you on your journey, haven't learned the importance of a simple thanks. Or they might not recognize the sacrifice it may have taken on your part to help them. But if we are wholeheartedly showing up and supporting genuinely, our concern shouldn't lie in whether, you know, we get the flowers that we think we deserve. Who said that you were going to get your reward for good works in the way you envisioned it or in the time frame you feel appropriate? You might not get accolades specifically for this good deed at all, ever, but it will come back to you. Your blessings will come. You may not be able to connect them to this specific instance, this specific good deed, but your fruitfulness comes from the cumulative. It's the collective weight of our actions that is measured. Now, supporting folk (laughs) ain't always peachy at all. And yeah, you may feel some type of way when someone blatantly takes advantage. That's expected. But you just learn from it and know what to do next time. 
don't let that be a deterrent or excuse for how you show up for others moving forward. Should you be aware? Yes. Your eyes should be open to the possibilities of things not lining up as they should or going your way. But don't let someone's faulty handling of you change who you are and your intentions and your impact forever. My mom would always do stuff for people. She still does. Sometimes they would be grateful and appreciative. Oftentimes, not so much. And a time or two, someone would try and take advantage. And I would get so angry, like, don't let them take advantage of you, mom. Like, why would you help them? <laughs> and you already know what they're about. And you have an idea of what the end result in this situation might look like. I used to think that she was being naive. But then I remember who my mother actually is. She's not naive or gullible. But what she was doing, she felt called to do. And she was showing me that some people will really need you. Others will take advantage. And still others will squander opportunity. But what they choose to do with your good works is their business. You did your part and don't forget to do it again and again and again, because there are so many people out there that really need you and your support in some capacity. And if your heart has been hardened based on surface expectations or what one person who doesn't have it all together did, you will never see the true reward that is coming for you. It's walking your own path. You don't know which direction it will lead and neither do those who you've helped. But you keep helping and standing with other people. We like to think we can do a whole lot without community. <laughs> but the truth is, not really. Okay, And community is what lengthens your arms and expands your reach. Like paying it forward. You impact one and they impact one and so on and so forth. And your reach will go far beyond what you ever envisioned. An act of support can be as simple as sending a card or a small gift to someone out of the blue because you know they're going through a hard time. It could be praying over someone who's been injured in a public place while they wait for their loved ones or help to arrive. It could even be a stranger giving car fare to you and a friend because you're both, what, 11 or 12 years old? clearly not yet responsible with money and unsure how you're going to get home. Shout out to you, Alphabetty. <laughs> I'm not sure we actually were in a rush to get home by the time we got that car fare because the wrath of my mother was waiting for us when we got off the trolley. But I digress. The point is, these are all true stories that I've witnessed or been a part of. And if a memory of how a stranger may have helped me almost 30 years ago, still sticks with me today. Consider the stickiness of all of our actions. And let me ask you, how do you want to stick around? So I want you to open your hearts this week. If you feel your heartstrings being pulled to offer support or help to someone, don't ignore it. And I want you to be honest with yourself about the expectations you have when you do for others. Are you doing it with no strings attached or with a, you know, they better appreciate it type of attitude? I gave you all a neck roll. You couldn't see that, but I gave you one. Anyway, do you have some type of motive for helping deep down within? <laughs> because we know we can't change others in these situations. We can only change ourselves. So make the call, do the thing, expect to not always feel like doing what needs to be done. And if folk don't know how to act when you do the thing, fine. That's not on you. You did what you were called to do, right? You planted your seeds. You can plant some more in someone else's garden next time. And we all need someone else to leave a few seeds in our garden from time to time. I'd like to leave you with a few words from Martin Luther King Jr. today. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? 
Thanks so much for listening today. I hope that what you have been hearing has been beneficial. And if so, please do not forget to rate, review, comment, and subscribe. And most of all, share. This is episode 26, y'all. If you've been with me from the beginning, I'm so glad you are part of the village. And if you are new here, I'm so glad you are part of the village. (laughs) So feel free to go back and catch up on some past episodes. Engage with us on IG. Send me an email, a DM. Comment on the posts. Let's be a village. I can't wait to chat with you all again next week. Take care until then.